Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my clinical biochemistry playlist and my mnemonics playlist. In previous videos, we talked about cystinosis, cystinuria, homocystinuria. We talked about Marfan syndrome, which is a problem with elastin. But today we're talking about Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is a problem in collagen. Which type of collagen? Well, it depends on the subtype of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome because this disease has many subtypes. Let's just talk about the most common subtypes of this disease. It could be a defect in collagen type 3, which is in vessels, or collagen type 5. We have skin and we have joints. To get the most out of this video, please watch the previous video, a detailed discussion on Ehlers-Danlos before this one. And that's why I always request that you watch my videos in order for maximum understanding and retention. Bones, cartilages, tendons, ligaments, muscles, etc. come from the mesoderm. Bones are hard because they are made of type 1 collagen. Cartilages are firm because they are made of type 2 collagen. Also because the mineralization is different. So let's review collagen subtypes. Type 1 in bone. Type 2 in cartilage. cartilage. Type 3, look at how flexible this is. Like blood vessels. Some wavy action. Type 4 is in the floor, the basement membrane. Type 5, hair, placenta, etc. As you recall, Ehlers-Danlos is a problem in collagen. Many cases of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome are autosomal dominant in inheritance, others are autosomal recessive. Some patients with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome have a defect in collagen type 3, which is in vessels, and they have all of these vessel problems such as aortic root dilatation with aortic regurgitation, murmur, aortic dissection, aortic aneurysms, aneurysms in the brain, bruising, dissections, thin skin, organ rupture, uterine prolapse, and much more. The patients who have problem with collagen type 5 have skin and joint issues, skin hyperextensibility and joint hypermobility and joint dislocation. So, these are the most common subtypes of Ehlers-Danlos, but of course there are way more than these. The most common is called the hypermobility type, where we have joint hypermobility. We also have classical type of Ehlers-Danlos, there is a problem usually in collagen type 5, that's why the gene is called COL for collagen, 5 for type 5, A1 for alpha 1 collagen chains. These patients have skin problems and joint problems. Skin, hyperextensibility, the skin is thin, doughy, velvety, atrophic, transparent, revealing the veins underneath. Joint hypermobility as well as dislocation. If the patient can flex the fingers all the way up until they reach the patient's forearm, that's a classic sign of Ehlers-Danlos. The vascular type, as you recall, is a problem in type 3, which is normally in vessels, and this is why the gene is called COL for collagen 3 for type 3, A1, also alpha-1 collagen chains. We have weak vessels, we have aneurysms, we have bruising or ecchymoses, we have dissections in the internal carotid artery, thoracic aorta, and more. Aortic root dilatation will give me regurgitation on the aortic valve. Also, these patients can get mitral valve prolapse, which will give me a regurgitant murmur on the mitral valve. Thin skin and spontaneous organ rupture could be a rupture of a gravid uterus or rupture of the bowels. Varicose veins can be seen. If you want to learn about more symptoms, how to diagnose and how to manage patients with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, please refer to the previous video. On to the mnemonic, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. E, ecchymosis, that's the bruising, and we need echocardiogram. Why? For all of these cardiac and vascular defects such as the aortic dilatation and aortic regurgitation, the mitral valve prolapse, the mitral regurgitation murmur, etc. Don't forget that the mitral valve prolapse murmur sounds very similar to the mitral regurgitation murmur. Just don't forget to add a click before the murmur. That's for the E. How about the H? We have hyperextensible skin, hypermobility of joints, and poor wound 
healing. Next, the R, rupture of organs, such as the bowel or a gravid uterus or others. Aortic root dilation and aortic regurgitation. The D, autosomal dominant pattern of inheritance, or it could be autosomal recessive, by the way. The A, autosomal dominant, aortic dilation and regurgitation, aortic aneurysms, aortic dissection. A, aneurysms in the aorta or in the brain, berry or sacular aneurysm. If this ruptures, it gives me subarachnoid hemorrhage, the worst headache of my life thunderbolt headache. It's called Ehlers-Danlos. Look at the two S. Here is the skin hyperextensibility and here is subarachnoid hemorrhage. Ehlers-Danlos syndrome can increase my risk of carotid artery dissection, which is a freaking emergency. If you want to learn more about carotid artery dissection, acute limb ischemia, compartment syndrome, Volkmann's contractures, and much more, Download my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com to learn about many cardiac arrhythmias, angina, myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, and much more. Download my emergency medicine high yields course on my website. If you do not want to download my courses but would rather watch them right here on YouTube, click the join button and choose the highest tier to gain instant access to more than 300 premium videos. Please subscribe and hit the bell, smash like, support my channel here or here, go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases, or if you'd like me to tutor you in any medical topic you want. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.